Marcella, start us off. Mm. Is Sean McVay more hype than substance? <laughs> <laughs> more hype than substance. Mm. The hype's been tremendous. Mm. Golly, man, this dude is so much substance. It's just <laughs> insane right now. And to go to a Super Bowl and lose one game this year, this is where we are? This right. is where we land? There could be plenty of substance, oh, yeah. but that doesn't mean it exceeds the hype. Oh, man. I don't know how much hype he's getting, but he is outshining that hype with his substance. Let me give you some numbers. First of all, this guy. And we know how difficult it is to be a coach in the NFL. I hope we do. It's not just about your talent as a coach, but the terrain in which exists as you coach through the rigors of the game. Top 10 all time in terms of win percentage out the gate. His 35 plus games, he's coached 36 games. 20 and 27 and nine record. Of the top 10, five of those coaches are Hall of Famers. Just to let you know the company he's keeping right 35 games in. Hey, hey, man, you can only measure him by what he got. And what he has is those 35, 36 games. I'm talking about guys like John Madden, Vince Lombardi. And now we're getting into the indictment of his coaching tree or his relationship tree based on who he is and trying to use that to undermine how great Sean McVay is. Remember, respect to our own Jeff Fisher. That was a 4-12 and bunch that was in the Super Bowl a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. I don't care what level of hype, Reggie. Mm -hmm. The substance has trumped that. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with you because before McVay got to the Rams, Lord. they were terrible. Let's be honest, they weren't that good. And McVay has done a masterful job with the pieces that he has. And I, th I really think he's done a great job. Um, obviously, throwing the football 68 times a game is... It points to a, a big reason why they lost the game because this team is built off play action, right? And you have one of the best running backs in the NFL, and yet at the same time, you only give them the ball five times, right? And so I think, again, you got to get back to running the football with Ty Gurley because that is the foundation of what your offense is built off of. That's how you got to the Super Bowl. That's how you've had a lot of success. And I think Sean McVay is a great coach. Um, he's so good, he's gotten other coaches – his age with less experience hired. You're That's how good he my is. Point that for me. That's point. hype. But no, 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 no. no. Uh, That's hype for the other coaches. For him, let, there's let substance. Me, let Whatever let the other coaches this do, this one. Eric jumps mm. in here. A guy makes it to one Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the entire NFL loses its mind and goes out and hires four guys to be just like him. It's a copycat league. Uh, we've <laughs> never seen that. League. We've never seen that. That's what I'm talking about, the level of hype. That's not saying there's no substance there, mm. but the hype has so been you're saying incredible. the hype train around him when it comes to other coaches? Yeah, that's part of the hype. The fact that everybody felt like, oh, I got to give me a Sean McVay. I agree. I've never seen that. Mm. Well, look, to, to judge Sean McVay off of two years is wrong, okay? And to judge the coaches from his tree after four games is even more wrong. Mm -hmm. When you look at Chuck Noah... I know Noll, a lot of wrong things. Hold on a second. When you look at, <laughs> when you look at, at Chuck Noll, it took him four years to get to 500. It took mm. Tom Landry six years yeah. to get to 500. Bill Belichick had one, one winning season in his first, what was six, it, six, six years. years as yeah. a head coach. Yeah. And now he's the gold standard. Yeah. You, it's, you, you, can't, you can't judge him out of the gate. It takes time... Yep for things to show themselves and, and to make a, a legitimate evaluation. We want to rush the judgment on players, on coaches, on everything. Mm -hmm. We want to we cook a turkey, but you want it cooked in a microwave. Yeah. That's not how it works. You've mm -hmm. got to let it play out and see where these guys land. And, and when you do that, then you get a realistic picture. How good were you when you did your first show? Ooh, I saw it. Uh, it mm. but, but right on down terrible. the line, how good were you when you first started college? How good were you mm. when you did something the first time? Uh, Whatever it may be, you learn, you grow, you get experience, and, and that is a more of an indication of how you handle the experience you get as opposed to how you are when you start out the game. Yeah. All right, so my point, again, I think goes unscathed here by any of you all's argument. Oh, it's scathed. <laughs> oh, it's scathed. <laughs> Just scathed. He's the, he's the microwave coach, Oh, John McVay. And he got all the high. Oh, he fixed things immediately when he got to Los Angeles. Which he and did. So, and so, Which he did. Facts. Again, and he, he did. Nice job. Once. Again, what you know, once? Cam Newton, only one time to fix it. Cam Newton won an MVP <laughs> once. Oh, don't again, do that. you have <laughs> greatness is determined by over and over and over again. Yeah. And again, it's just like uh, Eric said. It took a while for uh, Bill Belichick to establish himself yeah. as the gold standard. Yeah. Mm. We immediately threw this dude in the microwave, made him the gold standard. 
and then let's go out and get three other guys and 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 that look just like him and make him coaches. And so I can sit back. If the gold standard is, hey, he fixed things immediately, how come I can't look at Zach Taylor and the rest of these clowns, Cliff Kingsbury, <laughs> and say, fix it immediately. You're supposed to be a microwave coach just like Sean The floor is out there winning. Don't do that. But, but what I mean, the... yeah, exactly. LaFleur, LaFleur is out there winning. Thanks and to Mike like, Patton, but go ahead. <laughs> he's got this guy, Aaron Rodgers, but yeah. I have Sean Payton started off as a, as a rookie head coach. My rookie year, we went to the NFC Championship game. The next two years, we were like 79, 8 and 8. Mm. The fourth year is when we won the Super Bowl. So to your point, coach, it does take time to get there. And now when you think about the Saints, you don't think about the Aints anymore before uh -huh. we got there. You don't think about the, the the fans who would come to the games with trash bags over their head. Now you think about a legit football organization that the Cowboys just found out the hard way that you got to play for six And, and one of the biggest problems they had was the defense. You've got Wade Phillips, who's about as veteran a coach yeah. as you can possibly get. Vic Fangio, he's he's an older coach with a lot of experience, and he's he's struggling in his situation. So so to just jump out and rush to judgment on any of these things, it's, it's what makes the established coaches and organizations thrive every year because there's turnover of coaches, and when there's turnover of coaches – there's mistakes made with yep. personnel. That's why Wes Welker gets traded to the Patriots. That's why things like that happen mm -hmm. is because everybody just wants the quick fix instead of letting it play out and actually trying to build something with meaning and substance that can compete for a championship every And year. just like y'all have said, Bill Belichick, Sean Payton, who I believe are the gold standards of coaching right now in the, football, in the NFL, it took time for them to get anointed and to be put in that position. It took one little trip to the Super Bowl. And a trip to the Super Bowl is tremendous. For this guy to get anointed, <laughs> and then now we got to hire everybody just like him. Why not go out and hire Belichick? Hold on. Why in, not in, today, uh -oh. in today's environment, Bill Belichick wouldn't last as a head coach. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have had the opportunities that he's had. It took Robert Kraft real strength of character yeah. to go out and say, I want that guy. Not only do I want that guy, I'm going to trade a first-round draft pick. He doesn't get enough credit for the chance yeah. that he took on a guy that that a lot of people, especially the media, had said he is absolutely horrible. I was in Cleveland when he was the head coach. Mm -hmm. I know what that environment mm -hmm. was like. I was there when we got to the Patriots. There wasn't a person in New England that was happy we showed up mm -hmm. in that building. Mm, now, now, and Tom, unhyped. Those guys were unhyped and had to earn. Okay, it. we've yeah, been throwing we've been throwing Belichick around a lot, so I got to go here. Um, and time is not always telling. Uh, sometimes you can rush to judgment. Sometimes you can wait and still get to the same results. So let's talk about Bill Belichick, the great, and his coaching tree. And in respect to Coach Mangini, who's a part of that. Let's talk about how that's worked out. Romeo Cornell, Josh McDaniels, Eric Mangini, my man, respect. Bill O'Brien, Jim Schwartz, Matt Patricia, Brian Flores. Look, you can wait for – Bill Belichick's been to nine Super Bowls as a head coach. And you can wait and say all these guys are going to be put in the best position for success. But of all those names and all everyone in this culture tree, only one has over a 500 win percentage, and that's Bill O'Brien. So the point of this is you got to understand that you can't indict these guys mm -hmm. because it happened so fast. Because when you see a slow play, you still have to look at it and say, it is an impossible task to just think that you're going to have osmosis and great coaching. It's a difficult... Well, difficult again, act. all these guys that shook hands with Sean McVay, more power to them, they got these jobs, and I guess y'all <laughs> good with it. I'm not. Again... You weren't good with everyone that got a job because of Belichick and, and, and I that feel, relationship? To be, I'm going to be honest with you, I feel like they earned it. They were a part of something super oh, yeah. successful they, oh, yeah, for sure. and right. had proven themselves and earned the opportunities to go out and get Cliff Kingsbury out of Texas Tech. Because he's got the same hairstyle and was <laughs> But is that on Sean McVay that we, we go to the same groom? Well, again, like, that's what? part of the hype, and yeah. I'm just pushing back against it mm. and saying all the... And look, Sean McVay, John Madden was the youngest coach at one point. And sometimes you can find that super six young coach that can do it. But I'm t it's just... You a, mean the same guy who had the same win percentages? It's the right. same... It's a tiny, tiny group. You're better off going with experience. But head coaches are a little bit like quarterbacks. There's so much turnover at the position. Yeah. The volume of head coaches there are and the ones that, that have longevity, usually they're tied into a really successful quarterback. But, but those numbers are those numbers. And it's the same thing with long-term quarterbacks. 
That doesn't mean that you stop drafting quarterbacks. That doesn't mean that you don't look at successful programs or things that have worked in the past to try to make good decisions. It's an imperfect, imperfect uh, perfect science when you're dealing with human beings and how they're Go how, how they're going to react in situations. I'd rather look at Sean Payton than Sean McVay is all I'm saying. And and I, look, Sean McVay may go on to be the next Belichick. Who knows? May go on to be the next Sean Payton. Who knows? But I'd rather be looking at these experienced guys, even a Mike Tomlin, that had done it year after year after year. In Cincinnati, they thought, oh, we're going to get this young kid, and he looks like Sean McVay. But wait, but then so I look at Sean Payton when we look at Bill Belichick, and it still doesn't promise you results yeah. when, and, it, when it branches off. No, and, no, no. And some people would argue that, that Sean Payton's underachieved having Drew Brees mm. and only winning one Super Bowl. Mm. I mean, there, there's an argument that when you have a Hall yes. of Fame player in that position, yeah. to only win one Super Bowl is yeah. a little bit of underachieving as opposed to over and, and, and that bounty gate didn't help. Uh, <laughs> you hold on now. Oh, 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 hold on now. Hold on now. You yeah, went yeah, in yeah, the yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, you just said something I wanted to respond to. I got a lot. What you want to do? What you just said... I wanted to respond to him. You made me forget it. But hold on. How about this? <laughs> How about the fact that you have to respect the, 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 the marathon, the terrain? By record, half of these coaches will fail. And by results, technically, all but one every single year have to go back to the drawing board because they didn't win at all, including the Sean McVay, who's had an 11-5 record, a 13-3 record, and now it's 3-1, and one, and he smoke, he's oh, hype. Here's my issue, mm -hmm. my bottom line, and we didn't get to cover it all, but... This whole thing of, hey, let's go out and get an offensive genius coach who's in his 30s and he can relate to these young guys in the <laughs> locker room, it's all garbage to me. Oh. Bill Belichick is a defensive genius who partnered with a quarterback and turned him into a genius. Go out and give some of these defensive coaches a chance. Yeah. Give some of these The older guys. ones, like Vic Fangio. How, how about give some people some <laughs> time? Going? Give some people some time mm. in order to see what it can become as opposed to after year one. Oh, it's not working? You're fired. I yeah. mean, it's just it's, it's uh, silly. Me, Eric, you know how I got this job? By being ahead of the conversation. Same way a defensive coordinator gets rises by saying, you know what, I think I know what they're going to do on the next play, and I'm going to do this. That's how you elevate. I'm just trying to be... I don't think mm. this little kitty corpse of Sean McVay lookalikes and clones, Man. I don't think it's going to work. That ain't how That's you got a job. Made. You got it because they want another well, like a Will Bond. Before. They say, who else look like Will Bond? <laughs> right. Go get him. <laughs> you look lookalike, too. <laughs> and you're a lot better now than you were early on, right? Ain't nothing Not Will Bond. I was, I was, you, you were great right out of the out gate. Of the uh, I was okay. good out of the womb. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.